this past Friday, um, Apple won its lawsuit against Samsung for patent infringement both on the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, basically, Apple had argued that Samsung had copied uh, the basic design of the phone as well as many of sort of the user features like the scroll scrolling and tap to zoom and things like that on the phone. And a jury found that, in fact, Samsung had infringed on those patents uh, and awarded app, uh, Apple damages in the, in the range of a billion dollars. And then in general, I mean, it's sort of a, a kind of a warning signal to other firms that make smartphones that you have to be very careful with how you design your phone uh, or you could end up in a, in a similar infringement lawsuit. And, and what that ultimately means for, for consumers is um, higher costs um, because uh, you, you have to invest a lot more in things like uh, researching patents and prior art and sort of doing your sort of due diligence but also somewhat sort of diminished innovation because uh, if I'm a new firm or someone who's out there who's trying to create a new phone, I've got to go through all that process. I've got to, um, you know, uh, jump through these hoops, and then I've got to worry about whether or not I'm going to get sued by Apple. And um, so it's got sort of a, a two downsides in terms of really potentially raising costs for consumers, uh, as well as I think hurting, you know, kind of innovation down the road with new firms. Uh, and, and, and new innovators. Some of the arguments that you hear from supporters of patents, and particularly software patents, is that it actually spurs more innovation. Uh, I think that's pretty debatable. Um, if you look in particular at software patents, they really build, innovation kind of builds on innovation. Uh, and the actual lawsuit itself, what, what, found, what they found uh, Samsung infringing upon were things like the outline of the case, you know, having a rectangle with rounded edges. That's, that was part of the, uh, what the jury found uh, Samsung infringed upon. The idea of, you know, pinch and zoom. Um, you know, those are sort of, you know, very sort of generic patents almost in the fact that they're, you know, they're, you know, it's hard to say that they were truly original. Um, in fact, you know, one of the misconceptions about the iPhone itself was this notion that Apple just sort of created it out of thin air and, and, and really was the first to come up with it. And, and that's just not true. Um, in fact, uh, there's this great TED talk by Kirby Ferguson talking about everything as a remix. And he t goes into detail about, you know, multi-gesture touchscreens and just how much, uh, you know, how there had been a decade of innovation happening. Um, and really, uh, Apple was sort of just at the right time, at the right place, and was able to sort of shrink it into this form factor that we have as the iPhone. But there was really nothing dramatically original about it. And in, in fact, it built on a lot of other innovations uh, to get to the iPhone. And so, you know, the, and, and really a lot of technology and, and software follows that kind of uh, innovation path where it's really innovations building on innovations building on innovations. And the, 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 you know, the benefit to consumers is, you know, how you package that together in sort of a, a product itself. So whether or not this sort of ruling was actually a surprise, is, it, it probably isn't. Um, you know, the, the patent wars between Microsoft, Google, and Apple have been sort of ramping up and, uh, over time. And it's really been kind of a way for Apple to sort of really kind of protect its market share. I mean, we have to remember that patents really are a government enforced monopoly. Uh, and, you know, as, as Apple as the first innovator out of the gate is really seeking to protect its market share and prevent sort of competition. Um, and so I would expect that, uh, you know, we will continue to see these type of lawsuits going forward. And the problem in the end with sort of, I think it highlights then a larger issue of our patent laws in general and whether or not they're actually suited to software and, and technology innovation in the way that they might be better suited towards pharmaceuticals and others where you have a very clear patent for a drug or what have you rather than uh, a patent on sort of uh, the form function of an iPhone or, you know, some sort of certain feature. I mean, it's, it's interesting to think about, uh, you know, Apple going back to sort of Apple's beginnings, you know, when, with Steve Jobs in the, in the early 80s. Um, if Xerox, which was the company that first designed the graphical user interface, had all the innovations with clicking on folders and, and all of that, if they had actually patented those type of innovations, I don't think Apple would have gotten off the ground in the early 80s because they would have been faced with the massive lawsuit from Xerox. 
uh, and you know, would would that young company have actually survived to not just create Macs, but you know, uh, you know, 20 years later, the iPhone? So, um, you know, I, I think for broader the broader public uh, and sort of broader society that you know there's there's concern of whether or not the patent system actually is beneficial to supporting innovation and development particularly if you're a new firm that's trying to create new products of uh, just dealing with all of the potential for lawsuits lawyer fees and so forth that uh, result of that and the other issue is just the cost again that raises the cost for each device if you've got to factor in uh, you know paying for lawsuits or paying for all this research on prior art and uh, negotiating that uh, those thickets.